Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. Welcome into my shop. I'm here today to expose yet another mistake. This is one of those things where if you're working and you get interrupted for whatever reason, it's always a good idea just to jot down a little note what it was you were working on last or where you were in the process before you head out the door. However, when you get interrupted, a lot of times there's not time to do that. And this is where mistakes crop up. I'll give you a perfect example. I was laying out the dovetails for this drawer, and this is a compound angled dovetail drawer. So there's a lot of kind of geometry and crazy stuff going on here. And um, I had to leave and come back a little bit later, and I jumped into another task before coming back to this drawer, and I invariably changed the setting on my marking gauge. Well, I didn't even think about it, and what ended up happening is I cut the tails on the sideboard here a little bit shorter than the projection I had set on my pin board. I ended up with a very nice uniform about 16 inch gap at the base of my, uh, my pins and tails here. You know, I could cry, I could recut the whole thing, but instead I'm just gonna do a quick patch and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. The real beauty of a patch like this is we don't have to worry about any kind of grain match or anything like that because we're essentially patching in grain. And ingrain's gonna turn all the same kind of uniform dark when you apply finish to it. Although, you can stack the odds in your favor by having a cutoff from the same board that the drawer front came out of, and I happen to have one. The other thing is you wanna go ahead and glue up the drawer. You can see there's some high glue stains and everything on here. What I don't want is to patch this and then you have to fiddle with everything again. I want this all to be kind of set and firm. So the glue has cured and I have kind of a fixed gap that I need to fill. So I'm gonna grab uh, a little piece that I just sawed off here. And I want to split out some thin wedges. I don't even have to be wedges at this point. I just wanna split out some material. I'll take a a wider chisel and kind of step back from the edge, maybe 3 16 of an inch, and just give it a good whack. And you can see I split off a little piece. I'll continue along the line here, split off another one, and it falls on the floor. Another good reason to sweep up your shop floor a lot is these little uh, chips tend to fall on the floor and you want to keep these chips. I'll just keep going. Chop out a fourth one just in case. I don't think I'm going to need all that. So now I've got four little pieces of stock the grain runs across the width here, and they are about an eight to three sixteenths of an inch thick. I'm gonna grab a bench hook, and I don't have to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp it in the front vise and hold it nice and firm because I can and because it's fun. Now I'm gonna use my bench hook as a backstop of sorts. And what I wanna do is plane in a wedge. So I'm just planing right into the hook and planing down at an angle. Just kind of evening the whole thing out. But also planing down to a fine point. I want to grab my drawer and see, okay, now I can slide into this gap. First, however, I want to get a, a nice straight edge here. So I'm just going to hold it up against the fence and kind of use this as a little bit of a shooting board. Actually, let's do this on the other side. There, nice straight edge on that now. So it will track 
up against this wall without a problem. So what I want to do now is flat that in so it's flush up against there. Hold it tight against that and grab a pencil. And I want to mark just inside where this gap ends, where it meets the pen. This line's kind of hard to see, I know, but I just want to drop my chisel on that line and just push down and you can see I can split the wood out real easily. And just for good measure, I was a little bit heavy of that line, so I'm going to come in and shoot that edge. So I've got two straight edges. I can come back to my drawer and I can slide that in until I get a snug fit. And you can see it pulls up real tight on the front and real tight on the back because of that wedging action. And that's ready to be glued into place. And I just want to repeat this process for the remaining two gaps here. So I'm going to come back down here and give it a couple of passes with the plane. And that slides in nicely to fill that gap. There, a little bit of uh, shooting to dial in the width and just some pairing up against the fence. And I've got wedges that perfectly fit into place here. Now I'll heat up the high glue and I can just tap them in place. All right, I want to pull out my wedges and I definitely want to keep track of them, keep them in order since I've essentially custom fit them to each one of these gaps. I've got a little bit of high glue and a paper or plastic cup here. This is actually liquid high glue. It's old brown, but I've actually heated it up. So it's got a real low viscosity and it just kind of drips nicely. So I'm going to coat both sides of my wedge and just kind of smush some down in the gap while I'm at it here. This is why I like the heated up version, the lower viscosity. Push that into place and I just a couple of light taps. I don't want to drive this in real deep because I don't want to drive my joint apart, but that's also why I want this nice and glued up and firmly in place. we go and the last thing I'll do is just kind of brush the base of these just kind of pushing high glue into any possible gap that I have it's the beauty of high glue is it's impervious it doesn't affect finishes now I'm just gonna come and plane all this down anyway so it shouldn't make a difference but now I've got that pretty sizable gap plugged up I'll let that dry and then I can flush it off. Okay, I've given the glue a little bit of time to set up. And I'm just gonna come in with a flush cut saw here. And honestly, I think I could probably give the glue a little bit more time to set up so I don't want to hit it with a block plane just yet because it just kind of gums up the sole of the plane so I'm just gonna use a chisel for now I'm 
I think once I have the chance to kind of come in and plane everything perfectly smooth, it's going to look even better. I'll give you an example. On this other face, I had a small gap down here at the bottom uh, because I chiseled past my baseline. Um, this has dried a while ago and I was able to flush it up with a block plane and it is an invisible patch. And because it's ingrain we're matching, you can see just how easy it is that it will just blend right in. And once I apply finish to this, it becomes even less visible because it, even, it evenly soaks in that finish and it just all becomes nice and dark. So there you have it. You don't have to have necessarily perfect dovetails because it's relatively easy to patch them if you get gaps. In the basement room that day Poking fun and making jokes For getting on their knees